appreciate it. Um, now, have we got John Patterson on behalf of Olivia? Please? Hello, John. Come on down. Um, Olivia's um, written um, submission was short and to the point, but you're going to expand on it. Uh, yes, so I believe. <laughs> Good on you. We've got about ten minutes if you if you need it. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Welcome. It's sort of new to me. <laughs> when I was told Justice to come here, I started to write some notes and actually that was me notes. <laughs> <laughs> there was just something I saw written, there was an email I got and it just said we need we need more local consultation through the powers being returned to local government. And I thought, well, there's not a lot to add to that, really. Um, that's exactly what we want. Um, when I'm saying we, I'm, I'm 79 now, so I'm sort of talking on behalf of some of us older people on this. Um, consultation is a big thing. Actually, when you, when you think, um, or when I think, all these planning meetings and God knows what's been going on over the last few years, you wonder, well, where's the voice of the 70-year-olds and 80-year-olds, you know? Much against common belief, we're not gog, are we? Just happen to be people with a lot of experience, you know? And consultation is a big part of that. Um, just let's explain. I, I, I live in Parklands, that's up on there northeast part of the country but uh, the city we got uh, hammered pretty hard in the february quakes well it was february june and december so we've shoveled a fair bit of i'll call it liquefaction and then he called it something else and um it's been a hell of a five years to be honest for all of us at the beginning of 2012, we started running a series of older generation forums. And the first one was nearly four years ago now with Sarah. We had Roger Sutton there, and Roger kept saying, be patient, so we'll all get through this in time. We were pointing out to him that, well, at our age, you know, time is one thing that's not on our side. And that was four years ago. There's quite a few people that were at that forum who time has run out and no longer with us. We had a number of forums afterwards with the insurance and the EQC and all that sort of thing. All promised a heck of a lot and nothing seems to have happened. We've just been in the same situation. Well, not the same, but it's not moving very fast. Um, if I could tell you about my own street, it's like many others, so I'll just use my street as an example. It's a cul-de-sac, there's 64 houses, and I think it's 18 that's uh, to be demolished, and all the rest repaired. Um, my house being one of them that had to go. And from the time it took, before Anne and I moved out of the house, to let them knock it down, you know, we moved to Sumner where they were building. Up to that time, we'd had 75 people through our house, you know, measuring, looking, reporting, coming back, measuring again, 75 people. And then while we were out and we were rebuilding the house, there'd be over 100 people involved in building that house. What do you think? So there's, it's taken 200 people, three years or over, to build one three-bedroomed house. Now, I've been in the building industry most of my life. I find that, well, I was going to say unbelievable. It is believable because it's happened. And uh, we are, there's a lot taking a lot longer than that. Now, when I say there was 18 to rebuild, ours was the second. We moved back into a house earlier this year. And it's a lovely house. Actually, it's better than the one we had. 
But when we walk down the drive, the street, the street's still in its chaotic mess that it's been in for the last five years. And uh, there's some houses being rebuilt, like ours followed on. That's coupled in process of being built, but there's still houses that hasn't been touched yet. So this building process has taken years. And because your house is finished, it doesn't mean you're out of it because you're still living in it the whole time. I mean, when I was on the building site, I used to go home at night and get away from it. Now I'm in it 27, you know, hours a week. <laughs> and um, it goes on and on. And it's grinding people down, really grinding people down. And one of the worst things is the state of the streets themselves. I mean, my poor little Suzuki Swift, God knows it wasn't built to be a Land Rover, but that's what I'm using it as. You know, you, when you like come into town today, you never know which way I'm coming in and I haven't got a clue which way I'll be going back because it changes. We've got the road people there, the sewers people there, the people putting the drains, they've arrived a month ago and they're all over the place. And we're very pleased to see them, but it's taken five years to get there. I remember when the first quake in our street came, you know, I was out there shoveling a trench through a liquefaction to get the raw sewerage away that was coming out of the ground. And I thought, well, I don't need an engineer to tell me that my sewers are stuffed, you know. But I'm back in five years' time to do it. And it's not just the roads that's affecting the older people. It's the footpaths, or lack of them. And that's the biggest, the biggest one for the older people. Um, I'd love to take you for a walk around our place. If you've got the time, come around, just take a quarter of an hour's walk and you'll see exactly what I mean. Got old people, I mean me, I'm reasonably fit and I go out for a walk, but the fact you wear bifocals, you know, you see your head, but down there it gets a bit blurred. And the road, there's always holes there that you've never seen before and trenches across and, you know, gravel all over the place. And if you're walking with a stick or particular walking frame, you can't go anywhere. We've got old people who's been sentenced to home detention. And they've served five years of it now and they don't know when they're going to get paroled, you know. And, and this is wrong. The, um, look, if you wanted a whole history of what's happened, I could go on forever telling you, but I'm, not sure I'm just, I'm just, I'm just the wanting history, to get John, the, the idea of what it's like. So it's this word with consultation. We'll come back to me a little bit of paper. We want to be able to consult properly with authorities, and we feel that it would be much easier, the power in the, this room, so we can talk to the powers that be, and hopefully they can tell us when we, how long it'll be before we can get our lives back again because because we're wondering how many more of us will die before that happens. John, thank you. Um, listening to submissions can sometimes, as Forrest Gump would have said, be a bit like a box of chocolates. You don't quite know what you're going to get. And uh, from your little piece of paper, you've been able to give us a, a remarkable um, sense of uh, the frustration and the challenges that are confronting so many people in Christchurch. So I really just wanted to thank you on behalf of the committee for doing that. Can you thank also, please, Olivia, for taking the time and trouble to pen a, a brief submission that has led to you sitting here in front of us and giving us uh, that, that uh, wonderful verbal visionary insight? Thank you.